Hi, this is Travis in the Uncanny Valley. I'm going to talk about uh, my struggle around event plans changing. So when um, this has been a, an issue, an ongoing issue for years and years and years uh, with me because uh, it creates anxiety and um, I'm trying to better flesh out what all is feeding into that and what all is feeding off of that. So, um, I have to talk to myself to figure out my thoughts. So part of this is going to be a developing, uh, learning on how these four things play together. Um, but okay. So one of them is that, uh, when there are event plans on the calendar, uh, like I don't just talk to myself uh, to form my thoughts. Like, I don't know what this indicates, but I have to, I don't have to, I feel like I have to, it's a, it's a deep seated need that I, I have anxiety if I don't do this. So whatever that means, but I uh, need to visualize the event with, um, the mental and visual calendar and um if it's a, the first time we've been to an event like it helps me to at least know like where it's going to be so if it's going to be at someone's house um you know i'll typically know like uh, you know a large chunk of the people that will likely be in attendance and um i can set expectations accordingly as far as anxiety and the kinds of conversations that people will likely want to have. So like if it's at, um, I don't really have friends that I do anything with. So it would have to be at, um, my wife's friends or my wife's friends, kids birthday party or something like that. Um, but I mean, so like the first time at one of those things, it's a little, there's a little extra anxiety because I don't know who's going to be there. I don't know, uh, possibly what the location, uh, looks like, um, the, the architecture <laughs> that plays a lot into it because if it has, uh, the way the rooms are shaped and all that and where people tend to gather, um, really has a heavy hand on how conversations will play out and how many people are likely to be in each of those conversations based on the size of the room and chairs and things like that. And, um, so it helps me to be able to know, like I can seek refuge. <laughs> this is a little embarrassing, but so I can like seek refuge from, uh, one social dynamic that is more than I can process everything it's too much more than I can process. So I will escape essentially to a, a room that I'm aware exists and, you know, is acceptable for uh, hanging out with other people. And, uh, it's just a totally different vibe. And so I need to visualize and, uh, work through mentally, like everything about the event, including, uh, what conversations like mentally getting caught up on what I last talked to people about and, um, remember what's going on in their lives. And like, it's just not something I have at my fingertips. Um, I, I honestly don't remember most people's names. Uh, so I might go over what their names are. Uh, um, but I need to mentally prep and organize my thoughts. Um, and that requires time. So like, as weird as this might sound, like I, you know, if a thing is on uh, uh, a Sunday afternoon or tentatively for scheduled for a Sunday afternoon and, um, you know, in the days leading up to it, uh, I've mentally devoted some time and blocked out some time to where I can, in the background while I'm doing random things, be processing all this stuff I just described. So if it's, you know, last minute, like, oh, uh, 
you know, I forgot to tell you, or I put it on the calendar, but um, that thing is Saturday instead. Like, that's a big deal to me because it's like, hey, you know, you of all the time that you had blocked out to uh, pre-process the event, you know, like I just whacked half of it off or a third of it off. And, uh, you know, it's like moving up a deadline for a work project. It's it's uh, it's stressful. And I can't do that pre-ruminating too far ahead of the event because then I'll have uh, forgotten it. It's like trying to memorize an essay before you a recital, you know, before you recite it. Like, you know, it needs to be kind of fresh in your mind. And uh, at least for me, it does. Um, so if it gets, if another thing around, if it gets moved up is that there's, there's, I think two things here around, um, <clears throat> I think the bigger one would be the overarching one would be loss of control. So there's a, a sense of loss of control there because, um, not only are all those, uh, things that I'm dealing with mentally, uh, real, um, but they're known. And so when it's disregarded as a real need, I process that, uh, disregard, uh, personally, because it, it, it can be a frequent thing, you know, and, and this is the same with a last minute invite. I don't feel like those are, you know, I just, this is me. I don't feel that those are super genuine. You know, if you've had an event and, you know, everyone else there has known about it for weeks and weeks and uh, the day of, or the day before, or a few days before it's, Hey, we're all getting it together here. Uh, you know, you're welcome to come. Uh, it's not just that I feel unimportant or extra. It's that it, I feel like it, it truly does indicate that. I mean, you know, it's we're going regardless, uh, the events happening regardless, uh, not that an event, other than like a wedding should happen without you, uh, your wedding or your funeral, but like to know that like, it's so last minute and so, uh, such an afterthought, uh, to invite you. Um, you know, it feels like either a last minute invite or, changing the plans, um, when that's a known, uh, need that I have for processing, it feels like that's a threat to the relationship because when a known need is articulated and, um, not just voiced that, um, how it makes me feel, but it's so actionable, it's so preventable, um, you know, it's a, it's a tangible thing written on a physical calendar. Uh, there are steps that can be taken. A text could be sent or something like that. You know, it's not a, I don't view it at least as a mental process because, uh, that's just the way my mind works. So I view that as, um, yeah, I take it personally, I guess. Um, you know, it's, yeah, I take it personally. So yeah. I don't know. What do you think? How do you, how would you feel if, uh, you know, you're not, you know, you're told third or fourth or second or third or fourth hand that, um, an event has changed and it's very last minute or, you know, it's a last minute invite. And, uh, how does it feel? You know, if it, if it doesn't make you feel like you're, uh, unimportant or, you know, they don't care one way or the other, whether you were in attendance, then what, what does it make you feel? Cause I, I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to process that any differently because that's just the way it makes me feel as unimportant and disregarded. So part of the problem that I've had to deal with is that because I lack, uh, empathy and mind blindness, I'm stuck in that rut of that's what it makes me feel. And that's the only thing I know to feel. And, you know, you can tell someone, oh, it's not that. But, like, but what is it then? So, like, I can't just guess, you know. If if it's something else that can be made sense of, then, you know, maybe reach out to the person who feels neglected or uh, disrespected or, or unimportant. And uh, maybe don't 
invalidate that, maybe use that up as an opportunity to say, that's a valid way to feel, you know, I don't feel that way when I'm told about last minute plans changing, or I don't feel that way when I'm told third or fourth hand that, um, a need of mine is, uh, is unimportant or whatever. I mean, but like, but, but I feel this way, you know, maybe, uh, provide another way to look at it because until I can, uh, back into that through sympathy, you know, find things, uh, find scenarios or situations to where I can relate to that, you know, cause I'm good at analogies. I would love, you know, I always love the opportunity to figure out a new way to look at things. It just has to click. It has to make sense. So, I mean, I might challenge like, well, but that's, that's really different to me in this way. Um, so how do you reconcile, um, that huge difference, you know? So like, I might need a different analogy so that I can really understand how, um, you know, that's not meant to make someone feel unimportant. And, you know, if that's too needy, then, you know, that's, you know, that's just what it is. So I, I don't know how to make a, a need feel less needy, but, uh, yeah. So what can you do to help in that area? Maybe what's a need that someone else has expressed that maybe it's not around event chain, event plans changing, but you know, around loss of control or feeling like their need has been, um, disrespected and, and there's an articulated way that you can respect that need. Cause I know I, uh, I have blind spots to other people's needs because, um, it's hard for me to process, uh, just a, a grouping of words that are put together and, and posited as a need when I can't be walked through and understand it at a personal level. So if I can't get there myself mentally, um, you know, I can't have that sympathy and then, uh, have experienced sympathy and then, uh, use that to have expressed empathy and validate the way they feel. Cause I don't, I have to relate to it first. So yeah. What do you think?